I've been a very busy and messy Christmas elf. Well, here we are again, another video, and I'm hoping to get this intro done before the contractors show up. Right now, I'm home alone with Willow, and it's quiet for the first time in a while. But today, I thought I would work on the fruit embellished Christmas wreath for my front door. Now, I already made this last year, so I might just have the film going and while I'm working on it. I'm also going to make a kissing ball like they used to way back when using a potato. I've never done it with a potato before, so I'm hoping it comes out looking okay. But I thought I'd make it, show you, and then throughout the season or throughout December, I'll keep giving you snippets to see how it's doing. But, you know, I figured if you don't want to go out and buy a styrofoam ball, and you might have a potato or an apple, we can make this together. So right now, once again, if the contractors show up and you see in the video that I'm talking but doing a voiceover, no, it's not a foreign movie. It's me just doing a voiceover because there is hammering and sawing and men talking all over the house. But let's do this project together and I hope you are inspired to try something in your own home, whether it's this project or something else. I'm gonna head outside now. I've actually got my father's coat. I've shared this in past videos last year and the year before. Love wearing my dad's coat when I go out in the woods. Uh, we used to go out and cut our own greenery and trees, and I just love wearing it. It reminds me of him, and it just makes me feel a little more grounded to what I'm doing for the day. So I'm gonna put my coat on, put in my boots on, and we're gonna go outside and cut some boxwood and greens to make the kissing ball. Oh, and speaking of, contractors just showed up. Perfect timing. Perfect. All right, so we're outside in the garden and I just had to tell all the men in the house that this is what I'm doing for a living now. So awkward moment over of talking to myself and filming on camera with people here. But we have a lot of boxwood around the property. We have inkberry around the property and of course some other evergreens. I purposely did not trim the boxwood because I wanted to do this kissing ball. So what I'm gonna do is start collecting some of the overgrowth here. There's also some in the back of the house, but I probably won't film that because that's where all the equipment is for the mini split that's going in. So I'll sneak back there in and out when the guys aren't working. I don't wanna get in their way. Then we're gonna walk around and grab some more greens and head back into the kitchen. So, I'm gonna be starting with a potato that's probably only two or three inches in diameter. So I'm gonna grab about six inch long pieces, but I'll make them shorter once we make it, because if, you know, if I have the two inch and then six and six, you have an 18 inch, no. 14 inch <laughs> diameter kissing ball. So I don't wanna have them that big. I'm gonna probably hang this by a window or something. But I'm just right now, I'm just gonna trim some of the overgrowth and then I can trim them a little bit shorter once in the house. And this will also, now I can start shaping this for next year. Now, regarding boxwood and covering them in the winter, you're asking the wrong person. I recently asked a, a friend about her boxwoods and she said hers are winter hardy. I have no idea if these are winter hardy or not. I think I'm gonna find out though because winter's here or winter's coming and we're gonna see how this goes through the season, the boxwood out in front of the house and the others around the property. So once again, I'm not an expert when it comes to boxwoods yet. That is something that I'm certainly going to work on a bit more. And just like my other plants, I'm gonna to try to trim these right above another bud so that they'll have a nice shape and growth area next year. Once again, I'm trying to do about six inch 
lengths, and then I will retrim these once inside. This will also be pretty on shelves. It will be pretty tucked into some of the mantel um, on, on the fireplace. Let's see. You have the advantage of seeing the shape take place better than I can, so I'm gonna have to keep stepping back. I don't wanna over trim this. Like I said, I've got plenty around the property to borrow from. One thing our property doesn't have is holly. I don't have the winterberry here like I did at the other house. I don't have the, the holly that is very familiar to, to many of you. Um, so that's something I think we'll be planting at one point soon. Let's see. Once again, just trying to get a lot of these really odd pieces that are sticking out a little too much. And then I'll trim from some of the other ones that really are misshapen. Actually, it seems pretty quiet outside right now. Maybe we'll take a walk over to where the other boxwoods are. Those are very small. I'm gonna guess those were new plantings from the previous owner. Or it could be the soil. Once again, I'm not sure. Let's see. Some of you might be saying, no, don't cut that one. Once again, I can't see what I'm doing from, from your angle. All right, let's take a walk over and go into the messy area. I think it's a little better. We'll see. Let's go to the other area. There is the mini split from the outside right now. Today, I guess they're working on hooking them up to, at least wiring them to the electric box. The electrician has not come yet but I wanted to point out here are the boxwoods that definitely need some trimming. And then I also have some inkberry over here. I like an inkberry, it's very soft and um, it has a very pretty look to it. So on this inkberry, what I'm gonna do is just trim some of the lower branches and the ones that are starting to creep into the gateway opening. That way it will hopefully get a little fuller versus um, there's a lot of space here. And um, I used to have inkberry around one of my other, one of my pools and I really enjoyed the look. And those stayed smaller also and they were full. So these have had the opportunity to grow quite a bit. Now. There is a very long run here with one little leaf. I'm actually gonna cut back to that one leaf and a node and get this tip. Next spring, this will, let's see here, I just wanna make sure. These are gonna be a little shorter than the, the six inches, but on this plant I wanna, like I said, I just wanna make sure I'm cutting it back to an area that will bud out next spring. And this one is actually on the ground. So that one's coming off. All right, let's go closer to the front yard and see what I can find there.
I'm getting ready to do a DIY kissing ball using a potato as a base. By the late 1700s, kissing boughs and balls were popular, and they were usually made with potatoes or apples as centers. They would use holly, mistletoe, rosemary, ivy, herbs from the garden, and they'd also add spices and apples and oranges, sometimes candles, and usually ribbons to hang them. Right now, I'm just putting my greens out by type so I can grab them as needed, but as you saw in the beginning, it became a mess anyways. If I had rosemary or thyme in the garden still, I would also add some of that to this kissing ball. A little eggnog to sit by the fire while I work. And I had out these fake topiary balls. I wanted to get an idea of size and I'm going to just put them out of the way here. And this little guy kept wanting to fall and he actually did during this video. But what I have here on the table is I have my fake fruits that we're going to use in a while. And I love how these cloved oranges held up over the year. Grabbed a skewer from my kitchen to make holes in the potatoes. I have a few different sized potatoes. The red one here is one that I purchased last month actually for this craft project. I have some twine, but I ended up using just wire to hang them. I have a copper wire I'm using. I had it here on hand. My trimmers for the greens, another metal skewer if I need something stronger, and some metal cutters. Now the first way I wrapped a potato was completely all the way on the outside with a loop. I did one where I th went through one side to the other and just attached it to the top. A third way I did it was through the center of the potato and then I had a little piece of stick here from my greenery just to keep it from going through. But I decided to use the one that I wrapped around the potato. I just went around one side, twisted it, and up the other almost like wrapping a package and then I'm making a short loop at the top. Now if you want a longer loop you can do that but you'll see at the end I like to make it look like my ribbon is tucked way down deep inside of the kissing ball. I'm just going to cut the long tails of the wire and I'm going to twist them together to attach them and then I'm going to start putting in my greens. And the way I did this is I put a green on one side and then I put a green on the opposite. Then I went to the other quarter of the potato and then the opposite. And I kept going around it so that it made almost like a, a snowflake, a full dimensional snowflake shape. Some of my boxwood clippings, I was able to get several pieces to use inside of the potato. Now, I mentioned earlier you could use a potato or an apple. I chose to go with a potato because I'm going to be hanging mine inside. And I know sometimes if I have a cut apple or anything that has apple juice, the fruit flies show up. So I'm opting for the potato. I also feel it might be less messy. I also want to say if this is your first time making a kissing ball and you get going and it starts looking kind of wonky, don't worry, I promise the more you add, the better it will start to look. What I'm showing here is that once again from the greens, I can get several from one of my clippings. Once your kissing ball gets full of greens, it's helpful if you put the skewer in, make your hole, and leave it there until you're ready to fill the hole, or else it's really hard to find it after you pull the skewer out.
Whether you purchase them or make them, you can use kissing balls on top of items such as glasses and wide base candle holders. They make a pretty decoration whether they're sitting or hanging. I must say, it looks pretty darn good for using a potato, don't you think? How you finish off your kissing ball is completely up to you. I had some of this ribbon left over from the Tally Ho tree last year and I decided to use half of it for a tassel and then I'm going to use half of it to hang it. I did something similar with the wreath that I made last year with the little tassels hanging so they're going to be in the same room. I figured I might as well replicate it just a bit so they look similar. All I'm doing here is I folded the ribbon in half and I'm doing tiny little strips. Being careful not to cut all the way up through to the top because I'm going to end up wrapping that top around a skewer that will then be pushed into the bottom of the potato which will then be a tassel hanging from the kissing ball. If you try this technique, you could glue it if you want. I'm just going to wrap it really, really tight and put my wires. Once again, mine's going to be hanging inside, so it's not going to have to be putting up with wind or a lot of movement. As I did with the evergreen stems, I'm just going to take the skewer attached to this little tassel. I'm going to put it into the bottom of the potato, which is now going to be the tassel decoration for my kissing ball. I'm now going to attach the other wire, simply putting it through the loop that I made with the copper. I'm going to tie a knot at the top and then turn the knot down towards the kissing ball, hiding it in the greens so that nothing shows. I'm even going to cut the tails of this ribbon off so that you simply see a ribbon. Some may prefer to have a bow, some might want tassels. Once again, do whatever you like. I decided to twirl the ribbon around the skewer I had on hand. I probably would have preferred using a pencil, but I was too lazy to go get one. And not all ribbons will hold a curl. You know, the part that had the wire did really well. And then the section that did not have the wire, it gave it a little bit of a curl, but it just was a little extra touch versus hanging straight. Once again, you do you, and you finish this off the way you want. You might even want to hang jingle bells there or something festive. I see I have one ribbon to fix that's sticking out to the left, but that will be fixed for the Christmas house tour, I promise. Making a colonial style fruit wreath. Now, like I mentioned before, this is just going to be a recap because I actually made a wreath like this last year and I'm reusing the faux fruit that I had, including this studded orange. I used a drill and put in real cloves. I also used my drill to put in some of the wood skewers that also had wire attached to them so that I could then wrap it around the wreath. I will link last year's tutorial below if you'd like to see how I did this from start to finish. Now I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to put the rest of the fruit on and then I'm going to embellish the wreath with some of the greens that we found outside today. And then I'm going to put the bow and hang it outside. Last year I put cinnamon pine cones on the wreath, but I'm going to keep the cinnamon pine cones that I purchased this year in the house, in the urns that I use for Thanksgiving, and add some greens. 
The previous wreath also had English ivy, and I realized this week that I have no English ivy at this house, so that's something I might add to the shopping list for next year. Now I'm going to add some more greens that we collected outside together, the bow, and then it will be ready to hang on our front door. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, this channel is to help others feel and hopefully be inspired to find their own version of fine living, no matter how simple or grand that may be, no matter where they live. Now, if you've been following for a while and have not subscribed, please do so. It does help my channel out. If you're new, I hope you come back and visit again. Bye now.